Hi guys, so today I wanted to come on here and talk to you about when my journey started. Um, in 2014, I was diagnosed with cervical cancer, uh, stage 2B. Um, I went through my doctors, I was with Kaiser Permanente, I had a great team. Um, they told me that there was no way that I, w I couldn't, or that I wouldn't uh, <clears throat> beat that, and that I would come back and and be just fine and, and not have to worry about it again. <clears throat> they ended up putting me on um, a couple of clinical trials that went through UCSD. So I was doing two types of chemo and two types of radiation. I was doing internal radiation and external radiation. The reason why they didn't choose a hysterectomy was because <clears throat> where my tumor was located was located in between veins and it was just a dangerous area where they couldn't quite get all of it if they went in. Um, <clears throat> so pretty much when I was diagnosed I didn't even take it upon myself to be my own advocate and say, okay, what do I need to do and what do I need to learn? Why did I get this? Or at least pinpoint how I can <clears throat> um, start being my own advocate and learning more about cancer itself. I think a lot of the issues with with people today is that we we God we hold doctors to a to a certain standard and and they're people just like us so we have to remember that you know um, <clears throat> after my cancer came back the second time and the way that I found out was <clears throat> a year later you know I had been going to all my appointments. Uh, my appointments had been coming back. Nothing was abnormal. Not, everything looked fine. Um, and then I had a year, a year scan that was due, and I had to miss it. Um, and then I had to reschedule. It took like maybe two months, two months, for me to actually get in for a scan. Because you know how sometimes when you cancel, it takes a while to even get an appointment. <coughs> Sorry. So. Meanwhile, you know, I'm going in, I'm going to work, and, <clears throat> and I start to notice this, you know, my, my chest is getting heavier, I can't breathe the same anymore, um, it took me a while to come back from when I was, when I had lost the, my breath, um, I started getting really bad migraines, Ones that I had never gotten before. I mean, like, really bad. And so then I kept going to my doctors, went to the pulmonary specialist because they thought it might be my lungs, like a cold or bronchitis or something. <clears throat> went to my primary a couple of times. Finally, when I, when I ended up landing in the hospital for a week because I had gotten so bad with my breathing... They ended up doing a whole bunch of tests and finding out, sure enough, the last blood test to come back was that I had cancer. And it metastasized to my lungs and to other parts of my body. Um, small, very small um, part to my spine, um, my L3, and somewhere in my stomach, my lower stomach area, abdomen area. <clears throat> um... When I found out, my whole my whole world fell apart, of course. I mean, you don't go into the hospital thinking that they're going to tell you that you got cancer. Um, I, I at most thought I was going to have a bronchitis or something that I could get rid of and fight. <clears throat> so that's what happened. Um, and so at that point, after a few days of being in complete shock, and being scared out of my mind and crying and shaking and all of that, I, um, myself and my husband took it upon ourselves to be advocates this time and not to just go by what some doctor says to do and that's it. So, um, we started looking into videos, books, documentaries, 
um, anything. We ch we were ch our goal with this is to knock it out in any angle that we can. Um, so that's what my journey has been. We started off with a holistic approach, which we're still, in a sense, doing. Um, and I'll explain that to you, maybe in this video or another video. But we, <clears throat> when I first started explaining and sharing my story about my cancer coming back, I had gone to a few, you know, different places and, ex and announced it. One of them was Facebook. And one of, um, a, pers a person that I know um, had expressed that she knew some people that are owners of the hosp holistic hospital in Mexico and <clears throat> that she thought it would be a great idea for me to check it out. The hospital's name is Chipsa Hospital. Um, everything they do there is is a holistic uh, immunotherapy approach. I went. I went for three weeks. I came back home and I continued treatments at home through my port. Um, <clears throat> and when I left there in those three weeks, my tumors were shrinking. Um, and of course, when I showed my doctors here, there's they, they laugh at holistic approaches. They laugh at it because, of course, it doesn't make them any money. It doesn't... It, it's it's like have you tried it do you even know what that is do you even i think a lot of times they don't even have a clue of some of the stuff that they're um they're using in other countries that are working for people and people are surviving and living to see uh, their family kids grow and to just live longer happier lives um anyway so <clears throat> after i got done with my three weeks and i came back home a couple a month in a row, I had continued to see, uh, the treatments I was receiving there here. And um, after my funds ran out, I felt stuck. I felt like I had to do something. And I turned to chemo and radiation. And my body didn't take it. <clears throat> my body rejected it. And I think partially that was because I kind of was rejecting it. Because I, I know what it does to you. And I know that it's a chemical and it kills you. And it... I, that's just what I believe in hold heartily. And so why I even did it, I don't know. I couldn't even tell you why. I guess it was for the simple fact that I didn't want to feel like I wasn't doing something. You know, alongside doing the treatments at that hospital, they have you try, <clears throat> they have you start on the Gerson diet, which is whole foods, organic, vegetables, fruits. Um, and I did that for a few months and I'm still kind of doing it. Um, <clears throat> um, I still don't eat meat though. I try to stay low on my sugar intake, um, because cancer loves sugar. Um, I don't eat eggs very often, if any at all, any meats or anything like I just said. Um, so I'm still sticking to that. Enemas was part of that. Um, enemas was part of detoxifying your liver and getting all the bad stuff out of your body that's been in your body for years. Um, so I did all that for a little bit. <clears throat> and now I'm just kind of just trying to eat what I can because it's gotten to the point where I'm not eating well. And, um, you know, my body's telling me that it's time to get back on the treatments. So that is that is where we're at right now. Um, I'm going to share more with you um, as the days and the weeks go about, you know, what treatments are offered there what treatments I'm going to be doing again um, and, um, and how they've helped me. Um, I'm going to get a hold of my scans. I know I have them around here somewhere and I'm going to show you, you know, what, what the progress has been and what's been made and I just hope that you guys can continue to share my, my video, um, my page um, and hopes to just give other people hope. To get other people to learn to be more of an advocate for themselves. And remember, we've only got one body. And I had to learn this the hard way. We've got one body and we've got one chance at doing it right. Do not take advantage of your body. It's your vessel. Um, <clears throat> so I just wanted to give you a little more info. Uh, um, I'll talk to you guys in maybe at the end of the week or next week. But I hope you all have a great week. And again, share my story, and if you can find it in your heart to donate to help us get back to Mexico, thank you, from the bottom of my heart and from the bottom of my family's heart. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.